then I pour it in to fill up those cavities and then let it drain over the top to try and let it go over the top of those edges to thicken those edges up. This is kind of a tedious part. Cover up all those edges and then I let it let the material gel just a little. It'll start to thicken a little bit and I'll give it another coat. And our goal here is to try and fill up to create some a little bit more strength over the top of these um, these spots where the where it's thin because it's a sharp corner. If I ever get to build this mold again, I'll, I'll eliminate those sharp corners and you guys will just have a little bit of a radius down in those corners. But it doesn't matter because your wheels don't go in that far anyways. Okay. Unfortunately, this winds up giving us some really thick spots in the sides that I really don't like, but it's not, no way I can get around it. And the only reason that, that I that it bothers me is because, like I said, if you get thick areas, sometimes it tends to pull the plastic because it, as it shrinks, it shrink, the body skin on the outside isn't as thick as this area that we're pouring in, and it tends to pull those areas a little bit. But I think we're doing good this time. Try to put a little bit of material over all the edges that are a little bit thin. The material is starting to thicken up now, so it works a little bit more like a gel. Problem is, you let it go too long, it becomes so gel-like it won't pour. It's starting to get hot. And if we wait long enough, we zoom in right on one of those one of those pockets. You're going to see how this material goes off. It's already starting to go. You can see it's kind of clear, and now it's turning kind of cloudy. In a minute, it's going to turn all white, and this is just going to all it's all going to cure at one time. You can really see this when you look in the in a when you have a big thick container of it. Obviously the thicker it is the better it better it uh, it creates its internal heat and, and uh, cures like this. But as you can tell when we were mixing originally the material was clear but if you look at this it's all turned white just like the inside of all this material in here has turned white that's when you know that it's cured. So we'll let that cure for a few minutes and then we're going to flip it over and do the other side. And in the meantime, while that's curing, sometimes I can take off this excess material if it's not too hard already. Because this is all part that's not the body. too long. I'll have to trim that off later. Okay, now comes the part that I like the most and I hate the worst all at the same time because it's the, the, the moment of truth of whether this is going whether this is going to work out or not. So we've done the done the moldings, the roto moldings like I showed you and I filled up these these areas where we're going to put the, the threads into. Um, I did a little bit more roto molding back in here to give it a little bit more thickness. This is at the point where um, when I was first doing it, I started using um, foam to try and fill in some of these cavities. But I had some problems with the foam not being very predictable on how much it expands and sometimes it would push out on the plastic and actually cause it to distort the plastic. So I determined that it's better for me to just just roto mold more material of, of the actual plastic into it. I seem to get better results. So some of you 
may have got some of the first ones that have got foam into them and there's nothing wrong with those just that uh, those were the first ones that I did and I found a way that was better for me and um, so first thing we got to do here is we, we got to pull the uh, plaster mold apart so that we can get the silicone mold out of it. Okay, and we separate the plaster mold, pull the silicone mold out, get rid of this one for now. And this is where we find out if it's going to come out or not. I usually start in the front and spread this open. There's a lot of little pieces in there that have got to come up. That it's got to come out of those creases in the hood and the fog lights. The big old thick, thick areas where the wheel wells are. So I can get that one side separated away. Try and pull this away all the way around. Then I come to the back separate it as well. The back is where I really have the problems because of the undercut of the of the uh, trunk lid. But it will eventually come. If we can get one side off, that's a plus for us. So then we can work the other side out. get up in here, that's always a good thing. Release that tension off the back fender. And there we go. Okay, the areas that you're going to wind up having to work on, this is one how it just came straight out of the mold. Is you're going to have these seams right here that are going to have to be filled best way that I have found to do them, now this one came out really pretty smooth, but um, I would not try and do too much work on it. As a matter of fact, I'll probably just do another little video on showing what I do to get them ready to paint. But it's basically, I, I, I smoothed down this seam right there, the seam underneath in here, and then there's a seam right back here, you know, where the mold, where the actual mold split. As you can see, I didn't get the seam right here really clean. That's going to have to be addressed a little bit. And underneath here, but other than that, we came up with a really good part. Now, some of them I have taken when the insides, the inside of this one came out really nice, really nice and smooth. But so, and and I've got a good, I've got a good thickness all the way around all the soft areas. So I won't do it on this one. But on some of them, um, the next step that I did was I masked this shut and I poured some plastic into here and roto mold the bottom of it where the bottom of it is all filled in. But there's really, you know, it just adds weight and complexity. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. It just depends on how the model came out. This one came out really nice. So the next step that I do after I get it out of the mold like this is I drill, drill the axles. And the way I do that is I have a special tool that I made for doing that. Our tap and the drill. just goes over that cone to ensure that I get a dead center. Drill through it, get it started. You can tell the material is pretty, pretty tough to drill. We have to do that to all the, all the wheels. All the axle holes. drilled down the center. 
whoever, whoever invented the cordless key chuck for a, a cordless drill deserves a metal prize. Okay, and then I'll just type, I tap these for 832. That's the size bolts that you'll want to buy for attaching your wheels. They fit right through the, the wheels that I sell just without having to drill them or anything. They fit perfectly. Half inch, three quarter inch long screw is really about all you'll need. So then all the holes are drilled. And then, and if you buy the wheels from me, have the ones that are just made specifically for this. Yeah, right. They're just RC car wheels. But I did, they're tenth scale, so they should fit on here pretty good. Just screw it right down the middle, back that off a little bit so the wheels spin. And if you buy the wheels from me at no extra charge, I will put them on for you. So that when you open up your when you open up your box, this is what you'll get. So thanks for your patience and uh, hope that explains some of the things that we do when we try to put one of these cars together. I'll uh, work on probably another video showing what I do on the bodywork to get them ready to paint. Thanks again.